Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. I'm Cindy Daychuk with Queen Bee Creations. Thanks for tuning in. Um, today's video is kind of a combination of two things. First, it's gonna be a thrift flip. I have a huge pile of things that I'm still working through. The second piece is that I wanna give you an idea of, you know, we're just gonna use one transfer and we're using Milo's pages. So this is a transfer where, um, you know, he had put together a lot of these um, kind of compendium pages, right? So the, the page that's all um, kind of fungi, you know, that is all different mushrooms and different uh, botanicals and this one is fruits and this one is insects and this one's butterflies, this is sort of fish, sea life, and eggs, and so he put together almost like these scientific pages. Many of them have on the bottom the words um, of identif identification, right? What the names of the items are. And uh, I have loved these forever, so I was beyond excited when I IOD came out with them in a transfer form. So I thought it would be cool to not just do thrift flips, but to do all of them only using images from here. So that gives you a, an idea of the different ways that you could use them perhaps, but also how far an item like this can go because we're gonna have tons left over still. And I'm gonna do six different flips, I think. I think I counted six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six. <laughs> I counted ahead and I didn't trust my counting and it was only to six. That's a little scary. So let me show you the items because there's going to be a lot of um, just behind the scenes painting that needs to get done on some of these. So I'm going to put the transfer off to the side somewhere. Okay. So the first thing, because it's sitting out in front and I need to move it is I thrifted this huge tray. I love that it's got spoons. It's got spoons as the handles. So it's kind of old and grungy, it's stained, it's beat up. Um, I'm gonna try sanding it first. So I wanna sand it, get all the crud off of it and see what it looks like. So I don't know until I do that, whether I'm leaving it natural, whether I'm going to paint it, whether I'm staining it, I have no idea. We have to unmask it first. So I will be trying, um, okay, um, yeah. I was gonna say, I will be trying to remove these. I'm not sure how well that's gonna go because as much as they're sort of screws, they're stripped, there's no top to them. So, so I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to get them off easily. If I can get them off, I'm gonna get them off because it would make my sanding life easier. Um, if I can't, then I can't and, and that's just life. So, we're gonna be doing this, I'm gonna sand it. Um, the second thing is this. Now, it looks super cute as it is. It's got, it's heavy as heck. It's got two divisions. It's got the scroll, the raised scroll work up here. It looks awesome. But it actually has um, bangs here where the wood has all been um, feathered out. So it's obviously like a pressed wood and it's starting to feather. It's got... Um, here it's got staining and discoloration so it's all yellowed so there is some work that needs to be done before we can do anything else so I am going to be sanding the banged up frayed corner so you can kind of see what I'm saying and I am going to seal this after I sand I'm going to seal the stained area with um, shellac Okay, stain blocker. So any primer that says it's a stain blocker, you could do. So you could use um, DIYs, you could use a Benzinzer, you could, you could just use shellac. So whatever product you've got, but they're gonna have a shellac element in it to serve as a blocker. And then I'm gonna just paint it 
white. We're going to do white. We're going to distress it. And uh, because really it doesn't need a lot, as super cute as it is, it's just old, tired, and dirty. So we need to clean it up. Oh, oh that guy's heavy. Um, so the other thing I thrifted was this. I don't know what it's for. <laughs> I don't know what it's for, but this is what we're going to use it for. I have these little terracotta pots. So when it's sitting flat on the table, they sit raised. When you go to carry it, you can carry it like this. Now you could use this, you could put, um, not in this because it's terracotta, but I know that you can get like ceramic ones that are like these, um, that you could put in there instead. And uh, you could use them as little condiments. This you could use as little tea lights. You could fill them with Easter eggs because Easter's coming up. You get to do whatever you want. But we are going to decorate this up. And just because it, it's a different look. Um, I thrifted this little guy. So very cute little finial design. It opens up, so again, we've got a little hidden storage area for treasures, your little stash of candy, whatever it happens to be. But we're gonna just make this a little less um, traditional looking, just a little bit cute, so we're gonna do that guy. Um, metal pot with raffia and burlap. So we're gonna switch this one out, get it ready for planting. And then we have this uh, tote, which is looks like a birdhouse. So again, it needs to be repainted, look, look a lot cleaner before we add anything. Pretty grungy, dirty on the inside. So we've gotta get that spiffed up um, before we get to doing anything with our transfers. But this is, I think, a really cute design for leading into the summer where you can put you know, if you're if you're having a backyard barbecue, you can put uh, your condiment bottles in it, or you could put your cutlery, you know, cutlery and napkins in it. It's kind of versatile and it's just super sweet. So just kind of a fun design. So we'll allow it to still, still be kind of fun. Okay, so I've got some sanding and some painting to do. Um, this. I, I'm gonna do white, but I'm gonna do farm fresh, which is more this kind of color. So a little bit more of a blue green. I'm gonna paint this guy white, uh, painting the big tote white. Um, this I'm going to leave. I'm gonna take all this stuff off it and see. This looks like it's got paint on it. So I'm, I'm gonna take some goo gone, rub it off, see what I can get off. Um, if I can use it just like this, so it's just whitewashed, I will. Otherwise, I'm going to have to paint it out. And I don't know what color I'm going to do that yet because I'm hoping I don't have to. But my plans and the reality often become two different things. Uh, this guy. Um, I'm thinking I want to paint these white and I may do these this the wood in a contrasting color so I may do it in apothecary but I'm gonna paint it I'll see so I'm just doing some basic painting guys hopefully the sanding of the big tray works hopefully I can get those handles off and then we're good to go anything that's getting painted white is getting painted in beadboard by DIY um, and then we'll take it from there. I'll come back to you when we're ready to start decorating because that's the fun part. For my big tray, I sanded, I sanded a lot of the color off, but I left some of the dark color because I think it's gonna look kind of cool. And we're going for a bit of a weathered look anyway. So what I've decided that I'm gonna do, and let me just reach for a brush, um, is I'm gonna take Old and gray, which is kind of like a barnwood patina from DIY. And I'm kind of at the very bottom of this. So I am going to add a little bit of water and uh, mix that in. Oh, I better just stir it because I don't think that I have, um, 
I don't think that that loop's gonna close really tight and I'll end up wearing it. All right. Okay, so because it's water-based, I can just I can just add water to it. And this is actually going to, this is a sealer. Um, let me do this so that you guys can see it best. So this is a sealer as well. So you can use it as a top coat. You can use it as a stain. And it's just going to give kind of this grayed out patina to my board. And because this wood is so dry, you know, a lot of times you add this on and then wipe it away. This wood is just gonna suck it up. So that was part of the reason that I wanted to add some water anyway was just because um, I didn't have very much. And so I was just gonna make it go a little bit further. But mostly, you know, this wood is just going to gonna love getting some of this on but you can see the difference that it's gonna make and this is gonna give probably a better surface for us to be attaching our transfers to so I'm gonna get um, this added on to all of my edges and let it dry and then we'll be ready I think to see how well our transfers attach onto this for our large tote here what I decided to do I mean I um, did the sanding of the edges and I sealed over a lot of the yellow spots and rather than just painting it white I decided to let it chip back to the white so I have mixed up some milk paint and this is usually the mix is about 50% water to 50% paint. Um, you can make it a little thicker if you if you need. Um, you can make it thinner if you just want to stain. But this is about 50-50. I like using warm or hottish water. Um, and I like to add my milk paint to the water, stir it all up, let it sit for about 15 minutes, stir it some more. It just tends to let the milk solids kind of absorb more of the moisture and, um, you know, if it thickens up too much, add a little bit more water. This is a, a mix of, I just used colors that I had on the shelf. So this is some Pantry Door and some Sweetie Jane. And uh, I like that, that color um, and I have used it before. So. I am just going to get a couple of coats on here and then uh, see what kind of chipping we get happening on this one. Some of our projects are still drying, like our milk paint. And I'm going to want that to sit overnight just to let the chippy take place. This bucket... Um, I tried using Goo Gone on it. I tried wash, washing it down with soap and water. Couldn't get all of the stick gone. So then I tried taking Paint Blue, which is from the all-in-one line from DIY, and dry brushing over. That wasn't sufficient. So what I did do was I just took the paint blue and painted from that little rim down. So they got a little bit of a two-tony thing happening. And it's got to dry now. <laughs> so it's drying. But our um, old and gray stained wood is now dry. And we'll see how these like to stick onto this. What I am thinking for this Rather than putting one transfer in its entirety there, what I was thinking was to take, let me just see how this is gonna look. The fruit and vegetables, and so the vegetables and the fruit. So I kind of set it all, at, all in one together. So let's do that. Let's take these together. And what I was thinking was doing them, and they kind of fit. If I trim off the little excess on the edges, they'll kind of fit. But what I thought is I would take this one up about halfway. Um, 
but not doing the words because they're just not going to show up on here. So if I maybe do the top half then without the words and then I'll probably do the bottom half without the words but only up so far about the same distance. So up and around here-ish. Then I'll have vegetables coming up and fruit coming up. I don't know. I kind of thought maybe it would look good. Let's, let's try one side first and foremost and see how it does. And let's see how it sticks. All right, here's the experiment. So all that we're doing is that we are rubbing these to release. And what I'm hoping is that that little bit of the old and gray is enough to help give a little bit of, a little bit of stick. Now, you can see that it is sticking. It's taking a little bit more muscle than normal, just because this is an uneven surface um, and it's not slick. But I found that if I, if I started on one edge and I slowly lifted this up and kept rubbing on the edge as I was lifting, then it helped it be able to separate. And there we go. So what I just want to do is I take the backing paper, the shiny side, and I just want to rub over the transfer. So in essence, just burnishing them in. I just want to give an extra little bit of oomph <laughs> to stick down there. Um, and uh, it looks really cool against this worn backing. So just realizing I have some paint on there. So rather than getting more on the back of my tray. So the, the, the Malo's pictures are kind of aged and, and looking, and they look really good against that old weathered um, barnwood kind of look here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, an equal amount of this one and do the same thing adding it, and then I'm going to take a look at if I feel I need something in the middle or not. Okay. I love this. I love how this looks. And again, remember, we have our spoons that are going to be our little handles, right? I'm going to put those back on because it's just so cool. Um, so this space in the middle, um, I want to fill a little bit, but I don't want it to be visually dominant. I want these to be so what I thought that I'd do is I have this JRV stencil called Locally Grown. It's got flowers and says Fresh Flower Market. All I want to use is the locally grown part. And this would be maybe easier if I turn it so it's facing me so I get it sort of balanced in here. And what I want to do is just so that I, think, you know, I don't want to get the flowers. I don't want the flowers. So I'm just kind of masking off some of the pieces that I don't want so that I don't get overzealous with my stenciling and stencil too much, too far. But what I am going to use is I thought I'm going to use dark and decrepit. I don't want to use like white or black because it's going to be too stark and then that's what you're going to see. And I thought that with the dark and decrepit, which is sort of in the brown tones that would maybe be a little softer so that we can see the lettering but it doesn't take over we want the transfer to 
tape over. We want it to be seen. Okay, I love that. I think that's perfect. Let me show you. So see, you can see it. It fills the space, but your eye is drawn to the beautiful transfers, not to the phrasing. Now you could go, go bolder with that if, if you want, if you choose. I choose not. <laughs> So I'm going to let that dry and then I am going to seal this because as much as the um, old and gray is a sealer and the wood is kind of sealed, um, my transfers are not. And if somebody is using this legitimately as a tray, we're going to want something that prevents these from just scratching off. So I'm going to get them sealed with some big top from DIY, reattach the hardware. And then this one, this is our first one, is done. For our little birdhouse, I am going to distress this, but I'm gonna put the transfers on first and then um, distress it all together because I might want the transfers to look a little bit worn and then I will seal this one. I'm gonna use wax to seal this one. Now, it probably comes as no surprise, but I'm using the eggs page for the birdhouse. <laughs> So I've cut out a couple and I'm just going to just transfer on some of the eggs to this one. Nothing crazy. I'm not covering it, but um, you know, there's some really cute, cute eggs on this. What I'm not doing is transferring the numbers. Just... Um, because I'm going to be cutting them out individually, it just made sense to take the numbers off. Um, away from a volume of them, the numbers don't make sense. So for this one, I'm going to add some eggs and then distress it and seal it with some wax. And then this one is done. For our buckets, I'm going to use fish. Um, I just think that would be cute. So I'm gonna cut out, I was thinking of having them all upright, and uh, but there's not enough that are long to do that, so I'm gonna just have them swimming around the bucket. Because, because, because I can. <laughs> um, yeah, I just think that's gonna be cute. And um, they're just kind of awesome. Now these ones aren't numbered, they've got their names right by them. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take them with their names. So, this big, ugly kind of shark guy, you're going on there. Okay. <laughs> Our next little piece is this. Now, this was the natural wood. We painted it in Farm Fresh and then just brushed it in white wax and wiped the wax away. Now it turns out that it says Alexander Keith's on the side. And I ended up letting, leaving that, leaving that little embossing thing. So I think this is maybe like for a flight of beers. I don't know. Um, the one thing that I did was I added little risers on it. I just hot glued those on and painted them. They are just little mini Jenga blocks from the dollar store. Just because then it sits up a little higher and these pots just kind of sit down nicely in it, right? But what I am doing is I am going to add some little mushrooms. So from the Milot, Milot, Milo, Milot, Milo. More people are saying Malo. Okay, so Malo from the Malo transfer. Um, I'm just gonna pick some of the little mushrooms that are about the right size and do some mushrooms on this. And look how cute that is. So I'm just gonna carry on and get some 
some mushrooms, some toadstools on each of these little guys, and then they're done. I also have this one. Now it has the lid. The lid is over there drying still. Um, it needed just a little touch up. Uh, but this, I wanted to have florals. So we're doing the Malo's floral page on this one. So we're doing a bunch of the different pages. And we're gonna have some florals coming down from the top. We're gonna have some coming from the bottom. Now, because we're kind of curved surface, easiest to just kind of put them around the rim and then start trying to work the down, right? Because it's gonna do the curve differently. But this one's gonna come from the top this one beside it is gonna come upward from the bottom, but we're just gonna do nice little florals around the edge so that it'll have the white base, the white top, and then the florals um, going around the sides just to kind of, you know what, brighten it up, give it a little bit more of a springtime appearance rather than just plain stark white. So this is our last of our projects to get finished. So we put on some milk paint out on the outside edges just to contrast with the inside. And if you recall, I did not put any extra bond in, into the mix in the hopes that I would get some chipping. There's no obvious chicken, chi chicken. There's no obvious chipping taking place, but I do want to sand to smooth it out. And what I can expect is when I do that, I will get some chipping. So like little chips that have just come off there and a little bit of uh, distressing taking place. Lots of chipping along that edge. And that's gonna give me great contrast. So what I will do is get this sanded and I can seal it or I'll probably attach my transfers first and then seal it. So I'm gonna get this sanded and then come back. All right, I have the piece sanded and dusted. So I have it wiped down. I'm not gonna seal it yet. Oh, sorry, one little piece. Okay. <laughs> yep. Now it's sanded and dusted down, okay. I'm not going to seal it yet, just so that I don't get any of this, the, um, I gotta wax it. So just so I don't get any of the wax where I don't want it, meaning on this kind of plastic plate here, and then my transfers don't stick. So I'm gonna wax it last. What I have done is I've cut out more of the florals from the um, floral page of the Molos and I just tried to get small pieces and some that, I mean, obviously I'll have to cut down some more as needed. And I'm just going to arrange them on both sides of kind of this little partition. It's just sort of, you know, it's, it's got like a little faux, um, it's kind of glazed and it's got like a like a faux pattern on it that looks like it's embossed but it's really not so I'm just looking at adding a few little florals along here okay I'm just looking at how many I cut out how many I have and whether I'm gonna need to cut out some more which way do you go okay you go that way and I'm going to attach these right onto that faux glass. And these guys are gonna stick so, so fast, so easy. It's gonna be awesome. We have all of our projects done and I wanna show them to you. Um, the thing to keep in mind is that the idea with today's video was to just use the one transfer. And as much as I used pieces from different transfers, I have two full pages that I didn't even get to. Um, so six pages that I used. I have 
half of the fruit page left, half of the vegetable page left. I have about half of the floral page left. I have about two thirds of the fish page left. I have three quarters of the egg page left and I've done six projects with everything. Oh, and I think the mushroom, definitely at least three quarters of it. So I have probably used maybe a quarter of the entire packet. So when you're trying to think in terms of the cost of the transfer compared to your projects and how far they'll go, Obviously, it depends upon the project. Our tray took up more of the transfers than anything else, but it gives you an idea of how you can use them even sparingly. So let's kind of take a quick look. So this little project, um, you know, I envision for Easter being able to put eggs in it. Um, other times you could drop in a tea light and it's very subtle, right? Here we've got our little mushrooms on there which is very sweet but they're added decor you're not seeing them when they're actually nestled in here but if I want to use this out on maybe a bit of a buffet I would pop bowls in there so they don't have to um, sit down in there they just have to nest in there a little bit so that it keeps them in place they don't tip over I would put little condiments you know, little nuts, little whatever in these, or I'd use little glass dishes. So it's got a lot of flexibility. It's kind of a cute little little project. It's gonna sell easily in the shop. We did our fish on our bucket. I like the idea of doing the two-tone. This is kind of the finish that I was after for the whole thing, but we had that glue that just would not go away. Um, in which case, the all-in-one covered it just fine. There's no sticky residue, there's no marking on it. And then we did our fish going around the circumference of this. And it just looks super cute. Our little, our little birdhouse tote. We already had the green on the edges, so that when we distressed, we end up getting that two-tone effect on it. And we just put a little bit of the eggs around there to be able to, to cute it up. <laughs> but again, it's just a cute little tote. You could put a, a, a plant in here and have that. You could use it out on, on your back patio during the summer for your cutlery or condiments, things like that. So very practical and, uh, and sweet. This is our finished little floral. Kind of small lidded finial. So it's a cute little decorative item. It's definitely lighter and brighter than it was in that dark brown, which um, many of them are. Took nothing to be able to zhuzh it up a little bit. And it's just super sweet, perfect in some, some of your vignettes for the spring and the summer season, and really all year, depending upon your decor. So that one's cool. Our big tote. <laughs> You can, you know, this one needed a little bit of repair, which was mostly a lot of heavy duty sanding in the corners and things. Um, I decided to kind of two tone it rather than painting everything the same, just so that we had that nice contrast. And again, because it was already painted that sort of creamy, we're able to distress back to that. And it already had the dark black underneath. So we get kind of almost three tones coming through. This little plexiglass panel was a little bit tired looking and just having a little bit of those florals and we did them on both sides just kind of perks it up and makes it look a little bit more sweet right this is a nice heavy duty tote um like it's got some half to it so that's super cute and then our tray so we have our locally grown but again done in a dark and decrepit so that it's sort of um it says what it needs to, it fills in the space, but it doesn't dominate as if I had stenciled it maybe with a paint might have. And we've got our, our fruits and our vegetables, our spoon handles. We used the old and gray on this rather than the dark and decrepit so it didn't go too dark, which I think highlights these in sort of an antiqued way really nicely. Love how this one turned out. Um, six different projects and I think all six a little bit different giving you an idea 
of what to watch for when you're thrifting, um, possible possible different ways of being able to finish them off, ways to be able to use the transfers, um, just again, making them go far, but being able to add them into projects in ways that really enhance the project themselves. That's really what it's all about. Hope that you found something that you can take away with you after this video. And as always, love to hear from you. Check out the website, queenbeecreationshome.com for any of the paint and supplies, the transfers, etc. cetera. Um, we ship throughout the US and Canada. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Until then, take care. <laughs>